Hi y'all. In this video I'm going to talk about race realism and social policy. Now in my last video I was kicking Kraut around because he was uh, he completely failed to do a science. And if you'll recall in that video I said race realists have, so far as I can tell, three central propositions. One is that races exist, two is that the average IQ is different in, racial, in different racial categories, and three is that genes are uh, causally related to uh, IQ, from uh, which it follows that the genes are in some sense related to the difference in IQ that you see among racial categories. There's nothing intellectually difficult there, it's all pretty straightforward, and so far as I know there's empirical evidence that says that yes this is in fact true, and I, at the end I've made kind of a, a point about uh, our traits. We don't really have traits that don't have a genetic component to them. Everything is, has something to do with genes and something to do with, envir and with the environment. This nature versus virtue nature versus nurture argument is a false dichotomy. It's nature and nurture. Some of it you just have as like, you know, latent, uh, your innate properties uh, that can be moderated by the environment. They can get worse, they can get better. Uh, and so it goes, uh, your, your phenotype is your genetic uh, makeup, the environmental factors, plus the feedback between your genes and environmental factors. And that's, that's what it is. There's nothing difficult there. Now, that's the intellectual problem. The emotional problem is slightly different. As Oliver Wendell Holmes said, uh, you know, an ounce of history is worth a pound of logic. You don't have to be a mind of the ages to look back through our sorry history and see that races have not always gotten along particularly well, and that that has led to bloodshed and misery and stupidity uh, you know, all over the world, and we should probably try to avoid that kind of stuff. And so, um, the, the answer here is actually pretty straightforward. Whatever a fact is, just accept it. Facts are amoral. Saying that uh, the average IQ between race A and race B will not be the same does not say, therefore, race A gets to, to oppress race B or uh, anything of the like. You, you just have to draw a line there and say facts are amoral. Yes, um, it, it's a true fact, I should believe it, or it is a false fact, I should disbelieve it. Uh, but from that, it doesn't, on its own force, uh, cause me require me to go do anything. The rights of my, of my fellow citizens don't rise and fall based on my estimation of their IQ, um, let, let alone uh, rest on the estimation of some, the, IQ, the average IQ of some group to which they belong, but which may or may not model them. Uh, I'm not going to tolerate that. I didn't serve in the military to uh, you know, support the United States Constitution, to defend it, uh, just to to throw it all away because someone says, oh, well, there's a, you're not exactly the same in all respects. Well, why didn't somebody tell me? Suddenly, human rights don't matter. No, of course I'm not going to do that. Oh, wait, I'll do the Young Turks. Of course! No, there's two different questions. But uh, I get nervous when people go around and they're talking about, they, it's really important to them that people become aware that the races aren't identical. As though, you know, I realize there are a lot of people who try to deny this. Uh, but as though people don't know that, that uh, we're not we're not uh, I, you know we're not identical in all respects we're not interchangeable there are differences between each person and uh, you, whenever you group people together that group is going to have some properties that are different from some other grouping this isn't controversial people realize this but the pushback is going to arise because of our history and I get nervous when it it becomes very important for people to go around and make sure that everyone is aware that there are these racial differences. Like, well, okay, there are racial differences. Where's the other shoe? Uh, it's got to be floating around here somewhere getting ready to drop. What is it? And they say, oh, uh, I, I don't have any interest in the social policy implications. Well, okay. Um, it's good to know. Thank you, I, I guess. Uh, on trivia night, I am now improved. And I'm edified in a celestial way to do better on trivia night now. Thank you, I guess. So it, it just it makes me nervous. It gives me, some, it gives me pause. Uh, it gives me caution. So, there are also white nationalists, and I would imagine there's some overlap. I don't know that this is true, but actually, I do know that this is true. I, I know of one such case, so there is some overlap. Uh, anyway, the uh, and the, they want to have like a, a nation for white people, a nation for black people. You know, they, they want different different uh, geographic handing out, parceling out of land based on racial divisions. Okay, um, it's an it's an interesting proposition. There is a way that you can make sure that even people who believe that will behave well and will uh, behave fairly. It is a very simple trick. 
It works with large corporations. It works with different government agencies. It works with children. It works all the time, every time, without failure. So long as you have even mildly, uh, saying mildly reasonable people involved in the process. So you say to the white nationalists, uh, you know, you go distribute the resources however you want, draw the geographic boundaries however uh, you think is, is the best way they should be drawn, and then come back to me and present me the, uh, the plan. So they come back and hand you the plan. I accept your plan entirely. I accept your divisions. They are uh, obviously very good. And then you give those plans to someone else and say, you get first pick of which set of resources you want. That will force that, that person to behave well. Uh, whether they're children uh, who are going to cut the pie or cake or whatever it is, little Johnny, uh, you get to cut the cake into two pieces. You do the cutting. But little Frankie, you get to make the choice of which piece you want. And then suddenly little Johnny's hand becomes much fairer than other, oh, well, I'm going to cut it right down the middle because only a moron would say, oh, give me the smaller piece. I want, I want the better option. And uh, so when you do that, people just magically start behaving well when they know that they, uh, th that, uh, they don't get to decide both who gets to the, the best option and what the best option is going to be. If you only give them one of those choices, you engender cooperation and you engender fairness even if the people who are behaving fairly are going to hate you at the end of the day for doing it. Like me, don't like me, suck it, bitch. That's, I'm not here for you to like me, Mr. Racist Man. Uh, I'm just here to make sure that you don't go around trying to usurp the, this, the rights of my fellow citizens or to go around uh, deciding who gets to live where and uh, along what lines and what relationships they may or may not engage in. It's none of your damn business. Uh, you don't want to have sex with people of different races? Don't. If you don't want to live with people of different races, uh, there are plenty of places in the United States full of open acreage. Go buy a plat of land and, uh, you know, build. More power to you, whatever. Uh, but the rest of us don't need to, to participate in your, uh, in your utopia. And you should always try to resist people who are offering you utopia. It, uh, it never works out. Alright, so that's my thoughts on those issues. Um, have a good day.